face that this world has forgotten. Before going into this video, bear in mind there will be spoiler for upcoming Sun and Moon Pokemon game. Having that said, this video will not contain any new Pokemon, it will only contain new attacks from Quartz Generation 7. And there are a plethora of them, and having that said, well, let's just get on with the video. Ooh, what is up guys, of course, welcome to yet another, of course, video, of course, the possible leaks that has been, of course, with Pokemon Sun and Moon. This time we're gonna look at every single new Pokemon move introduced in this generation. There aren't really that many, outside of the C moves, there really aren't all that many, I do count them as I do believe, roughly around the 40, so... Having that said, let's actually look for them one by one and discuss them just a small bit, really. So, the first move that's gonna be introduced here is actually a new electric type move called Zing Zap, and it's a possible flinch move with 80 base power. Um, not gonna lie here, it's actually quite lacklustering knowing that yet till this day we still don't have any proper electric type stab. This is actually weaker than Wildstar as of right now, and Volt Tackle do believe is standing one that is standing tall right now. So while it's good for Share Force user, one could only hope a Pokemon with Share Force could be able to use it, because if not, then Zigzab is maybe not what was well asked for for this generation. But at least it's a new move and an electric type at that. Next one up is of course Trap Kick, a grass physical move which actually lowers the attack set by one. And um, yeah, we already have Leaf Blade, but at least it's nice to see that we have another way of attacking with Grass type. One could only hope that Trap Kick is not an exclusive move to the Grass that it gets it, but hopefully that more, well, one could say, kicking Pokemon should be able to learn it, though this is yet to be unconfirmed, but like I said, one could only hope. A new move introduced, which is going to be really interesting, is Toxic Threads, which is actually leaving the opponent both poisoned and reduces the speed by one. Now, it's not sh uh, confirmed whether or not this is a hazard move or if it just is a status move. Though I do believe it's just a passive status move like Lair and Growl. But even if so, it's a good passive move you can predict a switch out, lower the opponent's speed, and of course, leaving them poison could be helpful for actually most teams. So it's actually not a bad idea, though I hope it's a hazard. The new dark type move, Throat Shop, is actually been introduced. And it's actually ensuring that any voice moves can't be used for two turns, such as Hyper Voice and stuff like that. And I kinda like that idea, you know, stopping, of course, Hyper Voice spamming in VGC could be most helpful, and it looks like all relevant dog types of this previous generation can learn this move, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Plus, it's actually fairly strong. The next move here is Tearful Look, which is basically a parting shot without the switch out, the lowering of course opponent's attack and special attack. Nothing really big to it, but also definitely an interesting move to introduce to this generation. Much like Noble Roar now that I think about it. And next one is Soul Galeo's, of course, signature move, Sun Steel Strike. Physical 100 base power steel move, uh, ignores the targets, defense changes, or targets change basically. Um, nothing really big to it here. It kinda, it's kinda nice to see another Steel move of high power, we don't actually have that outside of Heavy Slam and uh, Meteor Mash. So seeing another steel move getting some recognition could be useful, but then again it's a signature move, so no one will use it anyway outside of Solgaleo. Strength and Zab is a new concept move that I haven't really grasped yet, so I guess the, um, the mechanics for it is much like Foul Play, so this the attack stat plus something else and then there is the damage, because it's a grass type move which uses restores HP much like Giga Drain, to some extent, but you know, on not on attacking it, and the target is reduced by its attack by one afterwards. So it's an interesting move, and I want to see the concept. Well, as the game comes out. Next move is Stomping Tantrum, a new ground type move. It doesn't look too cool at first time. Of course, 75 base physical definitely doesn't stand more well stronger than Dig. Actually, it's weaker than that. But its niche is if the previous attack fails, such as course protect or something like that then it will be a double power, which could be, well, interesting at least. It's definitely VGC scene, maybe not so much in singles. And of course, Spotlight is a new follow me move for this generation, and um, yeah, there is really nothing to it. Uh, it's, it's great that it made it a higher priority, but at the same time, the Pokemon that learn Spotlights are the same Pokemon that learns follow me, which is both unfortunate and, well, I guess, eh. Well, at least it's a new move, right? 
Now, here is an interesting move. Spirit Shackle, Ghost Type, 80 base, physical power. Dude, that seems, of course, signature move of this generation. And the opposing Pokemon can't switch out while this move is used. Definitely, not only is this a physical attacking, mean look kind of variant attack, it also ensures that, of course, um, Dude Decimal, which actually have a nice uh, type coverage, of course, Grass and Ghost, actually can utilize itself really well since, well, let's just say that it has the stats to pull it off and stay in against matchups. So, definitely want to see more of this. And this is probably one of the D more interesting movesets for this generation, if, if anything, for. Because we only have trapping moves that actually were signal damage. Now we have a, actually a locking move, which actually enforcing you to be locked as it does heavy damage. Super interesting and definitely making Duodestin probably the more interesting Pokemon for this starter generation. And then we have Speed Swap, which basically switches, of course, speed between the targets. And um, it, it's definitely a VGC move. Definitely. I don't see it be used well. Since the Pokemon that can use it are, as of this moment, only faster Pokemon, which kind of kills the purpose of giving up your slow speed for setting up possible trick room. So singles, maybe not so much, but VGC, definitely, since the Pokemon that use it are really fast ones. Alright, and then we got Special Thief, which is also a new ghost type move. It works like Snatch, basically, but with a physical damage output on it. The 90 base physical attack power is definitely very, very strong for ghost type. Which of course lacks this, so seeing something like this makes this move super interesting and I want to see the concept more broadened, though I really hope it isn't locked to the possible mon that they have been mentioning having it for this generation. And here comes also a move that are a bit more interesting, which is called Sparkling Aria from Primarina, uh, the of course Water Starter, which actually is a special type uh, war attack of course, the Curse Burn status, and that could be interesting. Um, it's definitely for the Guts users, it's definitely a way to heal them from some, uh, edge basically. And since Burn got nerfed, would actually only do in less damage now, actually half of, that of the previous one of 6.25%. Uh, this basically means that being able to cure somebody from Guts, which already boosted it and now that it's actually reduced damage, uh, could definitely help it out to ensure that you're not swept by something as simple as that. Having that said, it, it might be a bit too niche for its own good, but we basically have to see how the meta develops and see if it's worth the niche it's providing. And the next moon is Solar Blade. Basically the physical solar beam. That is really all I can say about it. There is nothing more to it. Next move is actually Small Strike. An Aerial Ace type move but Steel Base. Never misses. Pretty straightforward to be honest. And that is followed up by ground based recovery introduced each generation being shore up. And basically, it's recovery, but ground type moves are the ones who use it, so very interesting to see if anything. And Shell Trap is a new fire type move, specially based variant, which actually works like. Um, oh, what do you call it? Like, like Counter or Mirror Code, but it's a direct hit basically, you don't have to really risk it. And yeah, you can guess which Pokemon gets that, I'm not gonna spoil it with that. And that is followed up with Shadow Bone, and guess which one learns that? But yeah, it's a Ghost Type 85 physical base move with, of course, lowering the target's defenses by one. And yeah, as stated before, we really need more physical Ghost Type moves. I've seen another one, pretty darn nice, and it's a nice niche to it. Purify Poison is actually an interesting move. It's basically a VGC like Heal Bell. But uh, when you pass it, you have actually, if you recover your opponent's status condition, then you actually will recover his HP also, probably by 50% or something like that, or maybe a smaller amount. But it's kind of niche, I love it. Psychic Terrain is now the new terrain for this generation, and it protects Pokemon from priority moves, and of course boosts the Psychic type moves by 50% for 5 turns. Also, as stated, I said this too many times, but nice niche is what I'm going with, and this could probably help a lot of Psychic types from the, the Devious, Shadow Sneak, and Sucker Punches. Psychic Fang is a new Screen Breaker attack, such as Brick Break, and uh, a very interesting one at that, breaks of course apart the, phys the Physical Reflect and Special Light Screen. Bit unfortunate this one wasn't Special Base though, because I do believe the Special Attacker needed it more than another Physical Base Remover, but all in all, good to have more variety. Prismatic Laser is, um, in lack of a better word, the Hyper Beam 
of this generation, basically. It's a psychic type hyper beam, and I do believe that's really all you need to know about it. It's very straightforward. Power Trip is a new dark type move which works like stored power, but this won't be in physical. So, all in all, it's a very, very interesting move, if anything, if you can set up with, of course, your physical attacker. Having that said, there aren't really that many Pokemon that learns it, but the few that do might actually be able to do something with it. And Pollen Puff, and you know, guess who learns that? Uh, bug type move it actually is somewhat interesting. Um, target of your ally will be healed if you hit them, or damaged if it's not your ally. And actually fairly strong, Night Base, pretty much a stronger bug bus, so yeah, like I said, guess who learns that? And that will be followed up with course, Na Nature's Madness, which is super fang, but special base, basically, a fair move. Um, don't know if we needed stuff like that, though I do believe this ensures that there are no immune Pokemon for this type of damage, which could be helpful, definitely. Multi-attack is of course Seal Valley's signature move this generation, and it's basically a weaker judgement, a physical one at that, instead of special. Having that said, one could only hope that this is actually a turning point for this kind of niche in a Wi-Fi battle. I really hope to see more of Seal Valley with this move in mind. Moon Guy's Beam is now the strongest Ghost special attack and is of course the Lunala's signature move for this generation and it's unfortunate because it looks like it was a very very needed special attack for all Ghost types. Seen as a signature move, kind of a waste of opportunity but it looks the part to say the least. Launch is a new bug type move, physical one attack, exactly as strong as X Sister, but having a nice, nice niche to it would, of course, lower the opponent's attack by one. Having that said, hadn't Leech Life getting the buff, this move might actually have been more interesting, but as it stands right now, there are a few Pokemon that can use it, and well, let's just see if it finds its way into the meta. Liquidation is now a new water type move, which are pretty much exactly like Razor, razor Shell, but stronger. Yeah, 8 of 5 physical attack and may lower the target's defense by 1. So one can only hope Share for a user gets hold of this, because outside of that, I don't see the purpose of this move whatsoever. What? What the fuck? Sam, Sam, Sam. What is that? No, what is that? No, I, I seriously have no idea. We have Vine Whip. What the hell happened? And then we have Laser Focus, which is... interesting. It's basically a setup move, but guarantee a crit afterwards. And there are a few moves that actually use that to their ability, and of course they have the likes of abilities of Sniper and stuff like that, so one might never know it actually, but might be worthwhile using. And as I say that, of course we get the Instruction, or Instruct, which of course is the, the VGC move for this generation, which basically Orangoro is ensuring that the Pokemon he is pointing at use the same move again. Kettle Knight, cool, cool idea. I like the concept. Let's see how that plays out this generation. And the strongest physical ice move this generation, or for all the generations, are the Ice Hammer, which is basically hammer on, which actually forces you to lose your speed by one. Having that said, having such a strong move is just amazing, freaking finally. And then we have high horsepower, which is just a step in the wrong direction again. Basically, weaker or quick. And Gear Up is a new actual attack from this generation. Not attack, more a setup move. If you have a plus or minus ability, you will be raised by, of course, your attack and special attack by one. Much like my native Flux did, of course, in previous generation, which raises defenses, this one enforces, of course, attacks instead. So, Clink Clang, hello. And then we have Floral Healing, which is also a bit of an interesting move since it actually is much like your synthesis that. If you recover by 50%, but if you have the grassy train up, then you're fully recover, much like if the sun is up, Synthesis of course recover all of HP, and it's a bit debatable which Pokemon gets this move though. And Floor Cannon is of course Magyarna's signature move, as far as we know, but it basically is a Draco Meteor, but a fairy type variant. So I really hope more Pokemon course gets this, but I'm pretty sure that it will be locked down for Magyarna only for this generation at least. First Impression is a Bug-type physical move with two priority like Fake Out. The Pokemon that gets it, needs it, and it's a great contribution to this meta, most, most certainly. But so is also Fire Lash, not as impressive as it might look at, but it's a, probably one of the first uh, Fire-type moves that 
actually aren't, you know, we're seeing a little damage bait. So I kind of want to see this for now. Plus, of course, it lowers defense stats, which is also magnificent. You just, just spam this hit a bit of it. And then we get Dragon Hammer, which I basically, it, it's a stronger Dragon Claw at, at, at best. But no, I really had high hopes of this move and seeing it being just, meh, meh, have me, man. Damn it. <laughs> Dark Lariat, which of course is Incineroar's signature move, is probably the stronger Dark type move for this generation. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. It ignores defenses, you can't pull yourself up against it. So, a second type, watch out. And then we get, of course, Core Enforcer. This move is gonna be very, very interesting to see. It's a special hit Dragon type move which actually um, destroys your ability if you have gotten damage or still damage before this. This could be an annoying attack to take on. Then we got Clashing Scales, which is of course Komomo's uh, new Dragon type move. And it doesn't look to be all that good to be completely honest, but I'm open for being wrong about this. 110 special attack Dragon Base is not bad, it's just the aftermath that just isn't really worth it. Here comes the most interesting move this generation, Burn Up. Now, I did say uh, actually wrong about this in my previous episode when I did talk about possible new moves for Arcanine. Uh, Burn Up is actually a special base variant move which actually leaves you not as a normal type but just untyped basically. So um, you get pretty much no resistances or or no weaknesses depending on how you view it, and you have no stab left after you used it. But like I said, it could be used as a defensive mechanism too, most certainly. And I kind of want to see this going going well. I actually think it's um, overall a good move, plus a lot of power behind it, a really lot of power. Brutal Swing is now one of the TMs for this generation, and I don't really know. Um, hits all the ejected or adjacent Pokemon, and I'm, I don't know what that means, but... I'm, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that probably is the most viable move this generation. But Baneful Bunker though is definitely gonna be a viable move this generation. It basically is um, spiky shield, but it leaves your opponent poisoned if you attack it while you use this attack. And then we got the Aurora Veal, which actually is probably the strongest move this generation. And possibly the best buff to ice types in general. Uh, while Haley is on, if you set on Aurora Veal, you will be ensuring for five turns, as or as long as Haley is going, that um, you have both Reflect and Light Screen um, activated. And Brick Break or um, the Psychic Fangs cannot break this. So as long as Haley is going, your Ice Hypes are having the time of their life. I just really hope it is only on your side and not on both sides of the field because that would kind of backfire, but if it is what I think it is, then that's going to be the most important move Ice Pokemon's got this generation, if anything. Even with, of course, Ice Hammer in mind. Anchor Shot is much like Spirit Shackle, uh, a move that locks you in, much like me and Luke, but have a physical damage output afterwards. And this one looks the part, uh, the Pokemon that learns this, which I can't go over, is much like Decidueye, a very, very prominent threat in the meta, and probably work much the same. And the last move that we're gonna introduce is Accelerock, which until the Talonflame nerf felt really relevant, but now it's still relevant, but you know, kinda dumbed down a bit. We don't got away not working the way it did. But it still is like a one-hit KO for Volcarona. So um Lucinji or Listen Rock getting this move, it's going to be important. It's an exclusive move for it as of right now, but it's nice to see that we have a priority rock type that is reliable. So yeah. With that said, that is all the new moves this generation. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and the next episode we will go over all new abilities. These videos actually take some time. I was not expecting that while I was starting out, but yeah, here we are, 20 minutes later. Woo. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and stuff like that, and thank you, of course, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.